So I'm going to talk about the ACE inhibitor and ARB um, study and the uh, effect on COVID incidence and its complications. Um, if you could move slides, please. So when data on um, COVID first started to emerge from China, um, it was noted that there was an increased prevalence um, of hypertension patients in those with more severe um, COVID disease. And also that um, patients with uh, hypertension um, had an increased odds of death uh, in unadjusted um, analyses. And this um, started to make people think, well, why are we observing these effects? Well, ACE inhibitors and ARBs are um, commonly prescribed antihypertensives and the pathogenic coronaviruses depend on the interaction with uh, the ACE2 receptor to enter human cells. And exposure to ACE inhibitors and ARBs is thought to upregulate the ACE2. And the hypothesis is this effect potentially may increase the severity um, of COVID infection. Next slide. So these uh, concerns have been expressed in the academic community. And here in the top, uh, we see a letter in the Lancet Respiratory Medicine setting out some of the concerns. And it's really generated a lot of uh, public concern, leading to medicine regulators and uh, clinical guideline decision makers uh, to issue communications advising people not to stop taking these medicines during the COVID-19 pandemic, because there is no strong evidence. However, this lack of evidence is what we're really hoping to address with these studies. And we're hoping to get some, generate some strong evidence really to inform uh, public health on this matter. Next slide, please. So we're going to uh, test two hypotheses. The first is whether patients exposed to ACE inhibitors and an ARBs uh, have a difference in the risk of developing um, uh, COVID-19 and its effects. And in the second study, is to look at those patients with who are COVID-19 uh, positive, who are also exposed to ACE inhibitors and ARBs, have a difference in the risk of developing complications, um, such as intensive uh, care unit admission, uh, ventilation and death. In both of these studies, the controls will be at patients with other antihypertensives. Next slide, please. Um, so to test the first hypothesis, we're going to use a prevalent user design. We're going to compare ACE inhibitor or ARB uh, given as monotherapy for the treatment of hypertension to an active comparator made up of a, an, uh, patients taking another antihypertensive as monotherapy. Now this slide gives you um, a snapshot of how these exposures will be generated. We'll be using a combination of identifying prescriptions within a certain period of time before the index date and also the use of uh, estimated drug era spanning up to the index day. Um, all patients will have a, a prior history of um, uh, hypertension and the main outcome in the first study will be um, uh, incident COVID-19 diagnosis. Next slide, please. Um, the second uh, study design will use the COVID positive diagnosis date as the index date rather than a fixed period of time of uh, December 2019, which we used in the first study. Um, we'll identify exposures in the similar way. And here, what we're looking to do is to measure the risk of specific COVID uh, diagnosis related outcomes in the following 30 days um, of incident diagnosis uh, among patients exposed to ACE inhibitors and ARBs compared to those with other antihypertensives. Now, in both of these study designs, although we're using a prevalent user design because we do have limited numbers just now, we will look to identify uh, patients recently initiating ACE inhibitors and ARBs and examine the effects in these populations if there are sufficient numbers. The next slide, please. This slide gives you a little bit more detail of how we're going to uh, define exposures for ACE inhibitor and ARB monotherapy, but um, for specifically for hypothesis two. The top figure demonstrates um, how we'll identify patients with a prescription uh, um, for ACE inhibitor and ARB uh, issued within 60 days of the index date, and the fact that they will have no other antihypertensives uh, issued within 180 days before the index date. And we'll also uh, use a, a second approach as well, at the bottom, 
which shows how someone with a, a prescription issued at an earlier point in time will still meet the definition uh, using their um, a drug era. So, next slide, please. Here um, uh, we have written the protocol and here you can see that we specified everything in Atlas. Um, it's been exported into a distributed package um, and we know um, that it runs inside the HERA system in South Korea uh, and uh, will soon be ready to run in uh, other databases across the network. Um, the analytical design will use uh, data-driven methods to generate uh, propensity scores uh, for stratification and matching to deal with uh, observed uh, confounders um, when we have a slightly larger cohort. Um, and the main comparisons that we'll be focusing on, um, we will examine uh, the effects of ACE inhibitors and ARBs separately, but also uh, together classed as running angiotensin system blockers. And they'll be compared to monotherapy with dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, thiazide diuretics. Um, and we'll also um, examine uh, a comparison of ACE inhibitors against uh, ARBs head to head, and also running um, ACE inhibitors and ARBs versus uh, those um, uh, patients who have discontinued this treatment in the past. Um, as in some of the other studies, the primary outcomes um, will be for COVID will be uh, similar to those, such as ICU admission, ventilation, uh, and death. But we'll also look at some secondary outcomes focusing around cardiovascular disease in an attempt to establish a little bit more of the risk benefit. And of course, to, to examine the effects of unmeasured confounders will um, uh, do some of the negative control experiments. Next slide, please. So um, the protocol uh, is uh, uh, finalized. Um, results, well, we've heard that um, the analysis may take some time uh, to identify sufficiently exposed um, uh, patients and cases, um, but we will certainly hear um, how the study executes in HERA um, and some pr preliminary information about that in the next presentation. Um, we also attempted to run this um, uh, this in the Columbia University Medical Center database. Uh, the main cohort has been successfully run, uh, currently identifies only a limited number of patients suitable for analysis. Um, using um, an SQL approach, the numbers can be increased if the, the definition of uh, is changed to include a less recent ACE. Um, but one of the issues within that we're facing here and observed in this database is that um, there's limited hospitalization data yet um, because patients are still in hospital and we have to wait for them to discharge or um, die before the evidence uh, starts to appear in the database. Uh, next slide, please. So the next steps um, is to wait for uh, further data to accumulate. Um, we will be uh, aiming to run this uh, with an outcome of historical flu cases as well, and then subsequently to run it across the whole network. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's been involved in uh, uh, the study, both those uh, are frequently on the chat and also uh, behind the scenes. Hand over to the next pre presenter, thanks.